I love underdog stories. Like I, I live for them, which is a great irony in my life because I went to the University of Virginia and we were the first team in March Madness to lose to the lowest seeded team ever. The lowest seeded team had never beaten the highest seeded team. And yet somehow we managed that. And even through that pain of being subjected to the ultimate underdog burn, I have still always maintained a passion for underdogs even, even after that. I root for small teams. I am perpetually frustrated by the Champions League that it seems to be contested by the same few teams, the same with the World Cup. Croatia making the World Cup final. My apologies if you're French, but I would have thought it was the greatest thing ever if, if they won. And I hope the team from Asia, CONCACAF, or Africa is able to win the World Cup of my lifetime. Hopefully it's the United States. I realize that's far-fetched, but I would love it. Then the biggest, best area where the, the underdogs can really come through is the cups. The cups around Europe preserve that idea that we're all equal in this cup, that we are like, like the, the whole pyramid is here. I mean, the Coupe de France, they're inviting teams from like freaking Reunion to come in and play, right? They've got teams from French Guiana flying in uh, because they make a certain round of the Coupe de France. Like just awesome, awesome stories about, look, this is our national you know, football system, and here we are to play. And another great cup, like obviously uh, the, the, these are the FA Cups all over the place, right? Uh, for those that are less familiar, perhaps, with the way that all of this works, there's basically a cup in every country that is like every professional team playing in it. And the German one also produces some great stories. But there is a particularly great one going on right now that was just extended that has now reached the point that I absolutely want to talk about. And it started in the biggest way possible. That's because in the DFB Pokal, in the second round, Bayern Munich was drawn against a club called Saarbrücken. I realize I probably did not say that right uh, because I am, and this is true, I'm not German. Uh, but I did take two years of German in college while well, I look up Saarbrücken and like how to pronounce it. But... I, I did take two years of uh, German in college. Hated it. Hated it. I only took it because I I took Spanish for 10 years and then took the test to test out of it going into college, and I tested out of one semester of Spanish. So I figured I'd just dive into a new language. Didn't go any better. I had to take it Monday through Friday at 10 a.m. for two years. Nightmare. Absolute nightmare. Barely made it out of there alive. No idea how I actually did. Huge shout-out to the teacher for uh, bailing me out somehow. I, I don't know. Zarbrücken is in the, the, the Dreite Liga, which is the third league in Germany. So this is the equivalent of being in League One in England, the equivalent of being in like USL One in the United States. They are not even in touch with the actual Bundesliga, right? They're not even playing teams that were in Bundesliga last year. They're playing Bundesliga two teams. Dortmund two is in the Dreite Liga. That is a contemporary of Saarbrücken, the reserve team of Dortmund. Not the actual Dortmund, the reserve team. Hell, the second team for Freiburg is in the third division. To be fair, they are in last and probably about to get relegated, but the second team for Freiburg, that's not even Dortmund. So this club, Saarbrücken, that I probably can't say and is playing against Freiburg and Dortmund's second teams, manages to win in the first round proper of the DFB Pokal. They beat a team called Karlsruhe. Now, this required a 90th minute goal from a guy named Kai Brünker, which I don't know why every single U in this entire part of the country has an umlaut on it, but I guess that's just what we're going with. And this is a big upset on just off the top. That's because Karlsruhe is in the second division. This is a team in the division above where Saarbrücken is already, and a team that last year finished seventh in the second division. They were close to that Bundesliga playoff to try and get themselves into the Bundesliga. Honestly, I can't remember if seventh is in or not. It's either sixth or seventh. They might have been in the freaking playoff, but if they were, they clearly didn't win, so they're in the fight of Bundesliga anyways. But this team from the Dreite Bundesliga has come up and beat them. So this is already a magical run for Zarbrücken, right? You've beaten a team from the division above you. You're into the second round. And then lo and behold, you draw Bayern Munich. That was their draw. 
Now, it was drawn at the Ludwigspark Stadion, which is obviously not where Bayern plays. That's where Zarbrücken plays. So you're getting this really unique human experience of playing for third division club, but matching up against Bayern Munich, right? The 87-time straight consecutive champions of Germany. This is when you get into the draw, what you're rooting for, you get national attention, once-in-a-lifetime experience, and that's what you think it's going to be. And then, of course, 16 minutes in, Thomas Muller scores. But as you can see on this screen, that was not the end of the story, because right before halftime, Patrick Sontheimer scored. And I had assumed to send Ludwig Potsch Stadion into a freaking frenzy, right? They've all of a sudden managed to take it 1-1 to the half with Bayern Munich. Surely not! But then Marcel Gauss scores in the 96th minute. I watched the goal. It was like a scramble play after a set piece. Excellently done. Stunner. You get it all the way. I mean, this is a third division team. We're talking about a lineup for Bayern Munich that started Eric Maxim Chupomoting. This is a guy that's played for PSG and Bayern, starting striker for the Cameroonian national team when Samuel Eto wants him to be there. Zane Muller, Matisse Tell, Yeshua Kimmich, Matthijs De Ligt, Kim Min Shea, Alfonso Davies, and Manuel Neuer. They did not pull a single freaking punch in this match. That was the starting lineup. Are you kidding me? Right? That, that is, well, I mean, it's not the absolute best team that they could have. They brought Jamal Musiala off the bench, but even he freaking played in this game. Harry Kane didn't. They probably wish he did, but like, this is a team that should not be getting touched by a third division side. It's a stunning, stunning upset. The type of thing that it, you hope happens once every few years, just in itself, that this particular type of result will happen. It's happened twice this year. Ajax lost to an amateur team in the Dutch Cup. I don't know of any other instance this year where anything even remotely close to this crazy has happened in any of the cups. This is a blowout for Bayern Munich 99 out of 100 times. And yet somehow we lucked into the simulation where Zarbrücken happened to win the game. But as you would imagine, because this isn't the end of the video, they weren't done. That sends them to the third round of the DFB Pokal. This is the round of 16. There are only 16 teams left. There are 18 teams in the Bundesliga, 18 teams in the Zweite Bundesliga. That means there are, count them with me, 36 teams that are, was that, is that even, I guess it doesn't matter if it shows the right way, 36 teams that should be ahead of Zarbrücken. Uh, that is before you factor in any team in the same division that they're in, which to be entirely fair to Zarbrücken is a few teams. They they are ninth right now. Like they're not the best team in the Dry to Bundesliga. This is not a team that is galloping away from the competition because they're so much more talented than everybody else. No, they are just found, they, they are just running in a bit of magic. There is some indication they've been getting FM'd, as I would say, as an avid football manager player. They do have a plus 15 goal difference, which is actually like the third highest in the whole division, but they're in ninth. Let's be honest, this team isn't convincingly better than every other one in the division, and certainly not the type of team you'd look at from this table and go, nah, they're beating Bayern. But then they, you know, round of 16, you're like, this is a magical run. Zarbrücken draws Eintracht Frankfurt. Once again, at the Ludwig Park Stadion. This is a team that two years ago went to Barcelona and won at Barcelona and eventually went on to win the Europa League, a team that last year played in the Champions League and made the knockout stages of the Champions League. They went to the round of 16 of the Champions League last year. Eintracht Frankfurt is at a high watermark, and they got beat. 2-0! No goals in the first half. Eight shots apiece. Sure, 61% possession to Eintracht Frankfurt, but that's got to be the biggest given of all time. Zarbrücken gets a goal from Kai Brunker. There he is again. And Luca Kerber in the 78th minute. And then after that, Eintracht Frankfurt gets a red card. But it was already 2-0. And I know it's not Bayern Munich, but this is an Eintracht Frankfurt team whose midfield was Mario Götze and Makoto Hasebe, the Japanese star. These dudes are legit. Like, they're, they're, they're so legit. And they're losing. You cannot go. You do not want an away day at the Ludwig Park Stadion. You're just, you're going to lose. I don't know how they're not top of their league. Like, they, this is statistically in every way a really solid win. They didn't even foul more, right? Like, Eintracht Frankfurt had more cards. How does that make sense? If you're the, you're the team that's in the third division trying to hang on and survive, shouldn't you be fouling everybody? Giving away, you know, Corners after corner. They had more corners than Eintracht Frankfurt did. 
in the round of 16 in the DFB poll call people. It doesn't make sense. And yet still they are not done in the quarterfinal. They drew Borussia Mönchengladbach. And I will give you a guess as to where that game is played. The Ludwigspark Stadion, which is where dreams go to die for everybody but Saarbrücken because Saarbrücken while getting dominated a little more by Borussia Mönchengladbach, another very good club in the top division of Germany. So third straight club. I mean, obviously none of these are Bayern, but they already knocked Bayern out, so they can't play them again. But they, they, they went behind 1-0, same as Bayern, but then Mohamed Amine Naifi scores three minutes later, and we leave it to my boy, Kai Brunker, who scores in the 93rd minute. And yes, this is the second stoppage time winner that they have scored. And sure, they were outshot 21 to 10, and they got outpossessed 74% to 26%. But you know what? They didn't win the foul battle. They did give up nine corners. So, okay, they housed this one. This one, they got away with. But who cares? Because we have gone from, wow, what a nice win over Bayern Munich to this team from the third division is one of the four teams left that can win the German Cup. Four. This was the quarterfinal. They have knocked out three consecutive Bundesliga teams, including the 11 time consecutive champions. This is an amazing underdog story. I want to buy all of the Saarbrück and merch, like, like merch I can get my hands on. And if they make the final, I want to go. I will sell the house. I'll sell the cars. This is the story. I am behind it. They need to do this. I don't know who they're playing in the semifinal. I don't even know if it's already been drawn. I'm going to look right now, but they're in the last four of the DFB Pokal. They're playing Kaiserslautern. To be entirely honest, that's probably the easiest match they've had in the last four. Because Kaiserslautern is in the second league. So they're on a bit of their own magical run, but it's nothing compared to what Zarbrücken has managed to do. And now we will have a team from outside the first division of Germany playing in a DFB Pokal final. Uh, Zarbrücken does have to worry about something called the the Zarland Cup round of 16. Now, I don't know what that is, but I find it hilarious that somebody in the semifinals of the DFB Pokal is also playing in the Zarland Cup. I hope they win both. Up the Zarbrücken. And what a freaking story, dude.